Okay, so this is a demonstration of cloning an XP hard drive using Clonezilla. <clears throat> For the purpose of the demonstration, I'm going to be using VirtualBox and a couple of virtual XP machines, which I have set up previously. One of them is broken, as you can tell by the name. One of them is working. On the working one, the hard drive, the virtual hard drive, is called XP Working Dash Disk. On the broken one, the virtual hard drive is called XP Broken Dash Disk. Okay, now just to prove that it is broken, I'm going to fire it up right now, and you'll see an error message. Now this error message is a very common one, um, but you may have a similar error message there if you've got a broken system. Um, the file name may vary though. And the working one, if we double click that, you'll see that uh, it is indeed working as it should do. Righto, so to start off I'll just shut that one down and I will turn this one off. Okay, now first we're going to be using Clonezilla, so you've got to fire up browser of your choice and go to the Clonezilla website. So that is clonezilla.org <clears throat> where you will find some downloads on the left there. And you should grab this one here where it says stable release. Okay, click on that one. Then it says select CPU architecture. Now I recommend for older machines choosing i486 and file type should be ISO. And then just hit the download button. Now I won't download it because I've done it previously. Okay. <clears throat> Now once you've downloaded it, I recommend burning that one to CD. Um, that's by far the easiest way to use it. Or alternatively, you can actually uh, put that onto a USB, uh, bootable USB stick. It is difficult to do, to put it on USB on, um, on the Mac. Well, I want to say difficult. It's not that difficult. It's just a few commands at the command line, but it's potentially quite dangerous because you can overwrite the wrong disk if you don't do it correctly. So if you can use a CD, I definitely recommend burning that to CD. Okay, for the purposes of this demonstration, I don't actually need to burn it to CD, so I'm not going to bother. Right, now going back to our virtual machines. Uh, as stated before, this one, XP Broken, has got a uh, <coughs> broken version of XP on this disk here. Now that's just a file, a VDI file, uh, which is a virtual disk. And what I'm going to do is Go into the settings, the storage, remove that disk from the broken PC. Go into the settings of the working PC and add the disk as a secondary. Now, you'll see it's IDE controller here with one, hit, one disk here, which is set up as the primary. That's the normal setup. I'm going to add a disk, choose an existing disk, and then go to the broken XP, which is under XP broken, choose that one, click OK. What we have here is the uh, first disk is a, on the primary controller, and it, you can't quite read it there, but it's actually primary master. And the second one automatically comes up on primary slave. Now that's the same as if you put physically put a hard drive on the second cable of an IDE system. So if you imagine that's the first disk that's already in the machine. And then there's another connector on the same cable which you plug the second disk into. Okay, now firing up that disk, it'll boot as it did before off the same disk. And we're just going to go into Windows and just confirm what we see there. Um, normally you wouldn't boot into Windows with that second drive on there because there's no need to. But I just want to demonstrate what it looks like. So now you'll see we've got the C drive which is the same as before. And an extra drive has come up as E drive in this case. Now it could be D drive, could be E, could be F. It just assigns the next available letter. So that's the that's the disk drive that's broken on this system. Okay, I'm just going to shut that down again. Now what we want to do is actually boot that XP off uh, the Clonezilla CD that we downloaded and burnt before. So physically if you were doing this on a real machine, you would install a second hard drive on the working machine, and you would put the Clonezilla CD into a CD-ROM drive. Now I'm going to do that virtually. <clears throat> it's 
through the same settings that we had before. You just go to storage, go to the CD drive, and then choose the Clonezilla CD. And uh, that should now boot off that CD. Okay, so just take the first menu option on there, don't worry about choosing the other options. And it'll uh, fire up this customized version of Linux. So I'm just going to wait, 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 and now it might ask a couple of questions, in fact it will ask a couple of questions. Press enter on that one, it's asking if you want English, which you do. Uh, don't worry about the key maps, it'll just work. Okay, when we get to this point, <coughs> choose Start Clonezilla. Now, <coughs> the next question is asking whether you want to uh, clone your hard drive to an image file or to a device. Now, in our case, we've got two hard drives. We're going from one to the other, so we go device to device. Okay, we'll take the beginner option there because it is uh, simplified. And we'll choose disk to local disk, the very first option there as well, which means both the disks that we're working with are physically attached to this machine. <clears throat> okay, now, you'll notice that there are two disks there which look identical, except for the, uh, the number on the end here. And uh, <clears throat> the actual device name on yours may be HDA, and HDB. Uh, the full name is slash dev slash SDA. But basically the A and the B <coughs> indicates which one's which. So A is the first primary master. B is the second disk or the primary slave. So the question is which one's the source? In our case we're choosing the first disk. So we go to that one. And then we have no option but to choose the second disk as the um, target. Uh, it's a warning there that says you're going to lose everything on the target disk, which is obviously true. We just click on that one. Then we've got some options. <clears throat> uh, what I would select there is just skip the checking for the moment. So we'll just go OK, because we know the hard drives are identical size. Uh, so there's nothing tricky about what it's going to do. So press Enter to continue. OK. And then the more warnings, it tells you what it's going to do. Are you sure you want to continue? Press Y for yes, enter. Are you really, really sure? Yes, I'm really sure. I'll go yes. Okay. And uh, then it goes through the process. <clears throat> um, it's asking if we want to clone the bootloader. We want to clone everything, so we're saying yes. And then you get this indicator here, telling you how long it's going to take now. When you do real hard drives, this could actually take a couple of hours. So I'm going to pause the video here and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, you can see that uh, it's nine minutes and 12 seconds later. And uh, we're up to 99, nope, 100% completed. Okay, so that might take considerably longer on your machine, uh, on the real machine. Now when that's done, uh, let's see, we can just exit this. So I think if we just choose the power off option there, uh, in your case, you can just switch the machine off. Okay, and I'm just gonna power it off here. Now I go back into the settings to remove that uh, disk that we've just cloned. <clears throat> so we go to storage, take that one off there while I'm there. Uh, let's see the CD bomb drive already empty. And then we go back into the broken settings, the broken machine settings, which will no longer be broken. Go to storage and add the disk back into here. Choose an existing disk. It's still called broken because it's just a name. And you'll see that it automatically puts it on the primary master. Click OK. And now, with a cross your fingers, double click here. And we shall see if the previously broken machine actually works. And it, there it goes, it's booting up. Now, obviously, uh, this is a complete clone 
of the, the working machine. So you'll see there that the, <coughs> the name that's written on the desktop XP working is obviously taken from another machine. So if you're intended to use both machines on the same network, you should immediately change the name, <coughs> the computer name of the one that you've just cloned to, simply because, well, it's the wrong name. But also, um, if you put them both on the same network at the same time, you'll get an error message when you start them up. It says that there's a duplicate name on the network. Okay, after you change the name, you have to do a restart, just say yes to that. And then it's all done. Now, obviously, uh, what I've done there in the virtual machine takes a little bit more effort when you're working with physical disks and physical computers. Uh, but the main thing is that um, when you do the clone, is you've, you've got to put the, the disk that's the target disk onto the machine as a secondary drive. It can't be the primary one, otherwise you'll end up copying the wrong way around. Okay, so as you can see there, that name's going to change any second now. There it goes, XP repaired. So, all done.